on your very. Uh, I want to talk about uh, a little bit about mass spectrometry and uh, the innovative things we have done here at Stevens. Uh, mass spectrometry is an analytical technique. It's a very sensitive analytical technique. We can detect and identify compounds even if you had a sample of say one million of a milligram. It's a very small quantity. So it's, it's a very powerful quantity, very widely used, uh, uh, not only in academic fields, but in pharmaceutical industry, in hospitals, at airports, at many, many places. The market at the moment is about 5 billion. It's a very well-established market. And what we, in addition to these big players in this 5 billion market, there are also many small companies who are providing what we call the accessory market and uh, uh, various little devices that should be attached to mass spectrometers in order to make it very efficient. Uh, and this accessory market is about uh, approximately uh, about $50 million. Uh, if I may uh, explain a little bit about how this whole technique works, uh, we have to get our material first into gas phase. That's a little hard. And then we need that ma uh, material to be in ionized forms. We call them ions. Once we have achieved that, we can separate them in an analyzer according to their masses and detect them. So this way we can quantify compounds, we can identify compounds, even if we had very, very small quantities. Not only that, this technique can deal with mixtures, mixtures in very dirty, very difficult matrices like blood, urine, soil, water, and very often we can identify compounds directly from these substrates. And very often we have to uh, have these, com uh, these signals we generate, we call them spectra, in some kind of a database so we can do a very quick search it's a very fast technique. We require only about a microsecond to rec record a spectrum. So it's fast, sensitive. And in order to do the ionization, there are several techniques already available. And here are some techniques that's commercially available. Particularly the last technique was introduced about, say, 10 years ago. It revolutionized the whole mass spectrometer business because we could look at very big molecules. In fact, the 2002 Nobel Prize was given to the person who invented this technique called electrospray ionization. And there are several modifications of this technique and a few other techniques which has grabbed the market to a big extent. One of these techniques is called TACI, which is a modification of electrospray ionization. And there's another technique called DART, which is a direct uh, analysis uh, uh, from samples by ionization. So there are some limitations to these techniques that is available in the market. For example, non-polar compounds do not ionize very, very well by this taste technique. And even some polar compounds, maybe some of you might recognize these <laughs> molecules I have put in there, it's not very important, but definitely this is one of the molecules that most of you are very scared of, that's cholesterol. And this is called hydroquinone. And these compounds are not detected very well or not at all by this ex existing technology that is widely marketed called this. And what we have done is some modifications to these techniques and come up with a new technique where we can detect these compounds. And not only that, uh, the existing mass spectrometers are designed normally to take only one ionization technique at a time. So that means if you want to change from one ionization technique to another technique, there is downtime and you have to stop the instrument and then change it. 
So our idea was to see whether we can combine with a combined source where we can deal with various materials like volatile, non-volatile, water soluble, polar, non-polar, small molecules, big molecules, everything built into one, whether this is possible. That was the question we asked. Because very often a mass spectrometer is combined with with a peripheral device which will supply the samples directly to it. We call them chromatographic techniques. There are gas chromatographic techniques and there are liquid chromatographic techniques. But there's no equipment in the market at the moment where we can combine both GCMS and LCMS together. So what we plan to do is to see whether we can combine these together and then also produce a, a, a database and, and, and see the, uh, look at the commercial vi vi viability of this system. Uh, so basically, this system, what we, the modifications we have done, we can put a sample directly in. Something like, say, a tablet you buy from, from, from over the counter or any, any, any uh, commercial tablet. So here is a comparison of our data. This technique, which we call DICE, it, it stands for desorption ionization uh, by chemical uh, charge exchange. This is the Stevens technique. And you can see for this molecule hydroquinone, we see a very good signal for the molecular species and the existing commercially available technique, which is called DAISY, there is no signal at all. Similarly, the cholesterol molecule. Our technique produces a, a spectrum which has molecular information. This is the mass of the molecule. We have information about the mass of the molecule. And the existing technique called DART produces some signals, but there is no signal for the mass of the molecule. And this other commercial technique that is available this produces no signal at all. Here is another molecule, nicotine, and here is the spectrum we produced by our technique, the Stevens technique called DICE, and it produces a spectrum that is searchable with the database structures of spectra available, compared to the spectrum generated by DAISY, which is much more simpler, and this is not searchable with the database. So our spectrum generated by these techniques is definitely superior. Some more molecules, this is uh, the ibuprofen, uh, uh, you can see our technique generates a spectrum without unwanted peaks. And very often people, uh, analy analytical chemists, don't like to see unwanted peaks. These are what we call sodium adducts. So we, our, our, our spectrum generated by this technique is much cleaner. Uh, we have done uh, some more modifications this, to this technique so that we can, we can look at gaseous samples or compounds that can be pushed into gas phase directly in this combined source. So this way we can combine both liquid chromatographic techniques and gas chromatographic techniques into one modification and have a combined source. And here it is introducing gaseous molecules. Here we have a, a, a sample uh, of a we can, we can directly put this into, into, into the instrument and get a, a, a spectrum by this technique. And here also a small molecule, a gaseous molecule. Normal DACI device cannot deal with this kind of molecules and provide molecular information. They normally provide adduct information. So that way it is very useful. And we can put it to, together with some background spectrum here is uh, uh, all these big peaks are due to water and that can be used to calibrate the instrument and then we can determine the mass of a, of a, of a molecule to the fourth decimal. So that way we have very accurate mass and, and that helps to identify compounds. And the most important thing is with this modified device we have made at Stevens is we can combine both liquid chromatographic and gas chromatographic methods together and there is no such uh, device or technique available in the market at, at the moment. 